Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Jack and welcome back to another video. And yes, your eyes do not deceive you. This is Call of Duty World War II gameplay. And as a matter of fact, it is gameplay from my stream last night, or should I say very early this morning. I started at 3.30 in the morning and I went for like two and a half hours and it was a great time. And I decided to just stop playing on mouse and keyboard for a little bit and step away from the SBMM and EOMM and just decided to chill out and after about a game or two, it was like I never left. It was a great experience. And I came to realize really quickly, like, oh, this is what Call of Duty is supposed to be like. Oh, this is what I fell in love with in the first place. It's like, oh, no wonder I used to grind Call of Duty so damn much. <laughs> so it was a good time, man. We even had a few people in stream that were talking. You know, one person was like being really nice and supportive and then another person was talking all sorts of shit and challenging to 1v1s calling me you know all sorts of different things you know uh, or th that could have been somebody else as well I mean it was it was a mixed bag but it was a great time man it was a great time and uh, also I wanted to say not just thank you for the guys that supported me on stream this morning but also for the last video my very last video that by far got the most views out of any of my recent videos that I made which is also a testament and proof that basically how interested people are in the next Battlefield game. It's It really is a big deal. There's a reason why I chose to talk about it. Just like there's a reason why I chose to specifically talk about Sledgehammer games in this one, I thought this deserved its own video, and it's two gameplays worth, so it's, uh, it's a little bit more beefy than the length of my usual videos. So... Um, uh, because when you when you put it in the simplest way possible with this game here in Call of Duty World War II, which was released in 2017, one thing I can tell you though is that the last time we were dealing with Sledgehammer, they they left on a positive note. Like by the time this game was set and done, it was done in a positive note. The overhaul that was performed on this game was basically the biggest overhaul in Call of Duty history, and the game just got better for it. But unfortunately, timing was against the developers as well as this game. It was too late. A lot of people had already migrated to something else because a lot of people did not like the flavor, so to speak, that this game had to offer. Um, hopefully, some people have come back and come to enjoy this game. Some have, yet some haven't. Some people love Sledgehammer games. Some people hate Sledgehammer games. Uh, I've never, honestly, out of all the developers, I personally don't think that there's a more divided community in terms of opinion on sledgehammer games then you know in infinity ward you it's a little bit more clear cut with treyarch it's a little bit more clear cut granted right now at this point right now because of how activision is just interfering with everything in the development process we're not just talking about eomm and sbmm as a matter of fact in the comment section of one of my recent videos i had a viewer tell me that this is this does not feel like treyarch this is not treyarch this is activision and and way back before you know, before I put YouTube down for a while, I had made a video talking about that, give or something like that, something along those lines, where basically I said, this is not, it's not Treyarch making the game, it's Activision making the game. So, because if Activision can hire a specific crew for the algorithm of the skill-based matchmaking and the engagement optimization matchmaking, which is what I also call EOMM, which is what it's called, it's, it's not something I made up, it's, it's very real. Um, and it's more real if you're a great player <laughs> uh, or, or were a good player because at this time right now anybody that touches Call of Duty that was a good player and or is a good player basically gets punished 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 so so yeah let's let's get into it so we're only going to be focusing on Sledgehammer games in its entirety in this um, I, I know that when you put Activision on anything else it's basically like putting a piece of shit on a masterpiece and then it, therefore it gets ruined but let's let's just keep it simple and just talk about Activision on this one because honestly we have a good we have a decent amount of reasons as to why Sledgehammer's ga next game that is going to be released in 2021 here which is rumored to be called Call of Duty World War II Vanguard could be a great game and again it's got like even though it's called Call of Duty World War II Vanguard, it may not have too much to do with this game although oh, it makes all the sense in the world as I choke my V2 rocket there, um, it makes all the sense in the world as to why it makes sense for this game to be a World War II title. And it's actually got nothing to do with the fact that Infinity Wards was a modern warfare and, uh, you know, Treyarch, Treyarch's game was set in the Cold War, so to speak. And I had a viewer last night basically say, hey, only one snow map and we're talking about Cold War here <laughs> in, in, uh, in, in Treyarch's title. 
Um, so when you look at it, I mean, they could honestly bring back a few maps from this game. Like this map here, London Docks, in my opinion, is one of the best maps in this game. And Thunder was really on point in one of his most recent videos when he said, Hey guys, uh, you go back to play this game. I, I know we weren't too crazy about the maps, but you know, you play Modern Warfare for a while or even Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, and then you come back and you, you play on these maps. <laughs> these maps feel like GOAT maps, man. They feel like they're, they're the greatest maps ever created. And again, a game like this, after playing two of the more recent Call of Duty games, they basically kind of remind you of to why you enjoy Call of Duty in the first place. And at the same time, they also teach you a very humble lesson, which is basically, You'll never appreciate anything until it's gone. Like most, uh, half of the population either did or didn't appreciate Call of Duty World War II. And I bet you guys, if you were to come back, even if you weren't crazy about this game, if you were to come back and play this game, chances are you are going to like it a hell of a lot more than you ever did. And when you look at the way the microtransactions were done and how you can actually grind for guns in this game and the different kinds of guns that they had, like variants and stuff like that, which the iron sights and the cosmetics were the only different part of the gun, I thought that was awesome. And Treyarch, on the other hand, was basically nickel and diming people. Um, now, again, uh, Condry basically said back in the day that it, it would, wouldn't be on his watch if he was in charge. You know, he, he wouldn't be doing shit like that. But uh, when it comes to skill-based matchmaking and stuff like that, that's all Activision, unfortunately. So we know at this point with Call of Duty 2021 that it is going to be to a certain degree ruined. Now, the only question is to what degree? And that depends on the maps, the hit detection, and all that kind of stuff. Because we know that Modern Warfare 2019 and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War both have the skill-based matchmaking and probably the EOMM as well. And you could feel it more in, in Treyarch's title than you can in Modern Warfare's title. It's either that or Modern Warfare just has their shit together better because Infinity Ward has always been really good and spot on with the smoothness and the hit detection of their games. I personally have not had a problem, but with Treyarch, on the other hand, unfortunately, I cannot say the same thing. You know, uh, it, it's really as simple as that. So uh, we all know how hit detection in Call of Duty is just so precious. It, that in and of itself is enough to make or break a Call of Duty game in a lot of people's eyes. So I think it's something that always needs to be definitely uh, a big factor in the game. Another thing, the maps, you know, you can't, whether they're three lane maps or whether they're whatever you call the maps in Modern Warfare, you have to understand that the maps have to be a certain size and there has to be a certain balance. And when you look at what Sledgehammer Games did with Advanced Warfare and even World War II, they also showed that they are actually capable of doing like a bit of both. Like to where, like this game for instance, sure these were three, three lane maps, but it's like they they had a little something added to it. Like, like they used a few more uh, lines of sight or basically, um, uh, uh, in the way in terms of the length of the maps and stuff like that to kind of protect the player that is a noob from getting killed way too fast off of spawn that's one of their biggest concerns as developers is when you spawn in and especially if you're not a good player you know you want to have at least you know three to five seconds before there's an engagement or something like that and basically what they've done right now they've turned that engagement into a lot like especially with modern warfare it's a lot longer now if you're a good player like in black ops cold war for instance uh, and if you're on a streak all of a sudden you'll be shooting marshmallows and any random engagement and then you'll die two times in a row within one second off of spawn because the game is designed that way. The spawns don't make sense, even on the maps that are remade and brought back. So, see, if you think about it, because we all know at this point with Call of Duty uh, World War II Vanguard that is said to be the game, uh, we already know that the game is said to be in development hell. Worse than Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War was, which definitely has me worried and a lot of fans worried alike. So, to remaster a World War II map and to bring that back, really, it shouldn't be nearly as time-consuming, and I can so see that happening. Because, again, it it's taking place in the same era, and at the same time, it wouldn't they wouldn't need to spend any extra time on the map. All they need to do is basically uh, kind of remaster it for today's console, depending on how the game looks, um, and PC as well for this generation of games. Or maybe they just cut and paste, simple as that. I mean, it's not like, I mean, let's put it this way. This game, this game's maps look just as good as Black Ops Cold Wars. If not, do I dare say it, slightly better in terms of the graphics? Seriously. Uh, well, if you play on a regular, uh, on a regular PS4 or an Xbox One. Uh, PS4 Pro, Xbox Series S or X, I can't say otherwise, but I've seen footage and I haven't seen too much of a difference. I mean, sure, you'll see a clear picture, but um, in terms of like the overall graphic fidelity of the game and stuff like that. I mean, it just goes to show you, man, even on PlayStation 4, Modern Warfare 2019 
looks way better than Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. <laughs> so, and uh, that's another thing. The game, although we prefer gameplay over graphics, the game needs to look a certain way. It's got to look a certain way. And most importantly, it's got to play a certain way. I've been told in the comment section, as well as um, I think even on stream, if I'm not mistaken, one of my one of my viewers said this, and that is that the movement in Black Ops Cold War, something just doesn't feel right about it. It feels stiff or, or something of that nature. For some people, it feels different. Like, when you look at the movement in Modern Warfare, which is a game that is actually not based around movement as much as it is sound, the movement in Modern Warfare was actually very solid, very smooth, and that is one good thing and that I'm optimistic about is because uh, World War II Vanguard is said to be running on the Modern Warfare engine, which is, which is great. I mean, this is why I think it's possible, even with the bullshit of the skill-based matchmaking and whatever other bullshit that Activision does with the game and how they choose they, they involve themselves or that specific part of the team that, you know, puts their hands in the game and manages to ruin it. Um, even with that being said, if we get something in the middle to where it, it was like, from a, from a gameplay perspective, if, if it was to a certain degree like a half-breed or some sort of mixed breed of what Modern Warfare was, like for instance, let's say we get the hit detection and the movement and that kind of smoothness paired with the <laughs> map style that is more like Black Ops Cold War as well as the way Dead Silence works to where people can actually move around. It's like, you know, punish me for making a mistake in the game, guys. Don't punish me for moving around. I mean, in every single first, per first person shooter out there, there, you're supposed to, you're always, you know, if your movement is good, which takes time to master, if your movement is good and if you practice doing it correctly, you should be on top, not punished for moving or taking a single step or, you know, all of a sudden the enemy automatically knows where you are just when you take one small step um, and they could be on the other side of the map and still know exactly where you are. That's a little overkill. So if they make it to where how Black Ops Cold War is right now in terms of how Dead Silence works and all that kind of stuff and, and even even the map design, guys, I mean, even the map design allows for more movement. But again, it's the other things that are implemented into the game that are ruining it, a.k.a. Activision. So uh, and with the overhaul that they did, Aaron Halen, his hands were tied up until Condre and Schofield left. So when you look at how Call of Duty... Uh, World War II ended, I mean, it really did end on a high note. And in terms of what Sledgehammer does, like in terms of communicating with the with the community, uh, they're good with that as well. But again, it's very possible that Activision could be ruined that as well because even Treyarch themselves, I mean, they weren't memes before, you know? They, they always did communicate with everybody um, <laughs> in, between, in between updates for the game or in between DLC content and stuff like that. They always communicated. But now that's changed. Maybe because Activision is telling them to shut their mouth. Maybe it's a whole new crew that doesn't know what to say or when to say it and just does what Activision says and then ignores the rest of the community. Who knows? So, because at the end of the day, we really are on the outside looking in when it comes to this game. We really are. So, all we can do is really hope for the best and not, well, actually, no. I mean, Sure, we can hope for the best, but not expect the best. Because if we keep our expectations in, in terms of the way Call of Duty has been handled now recently, if we keep our expectations way too high, we're just going to be disappointed. You know, uh, at this point right now with the next Call of Duty game, all I can hope for is a game that has a decent amount of content that to that also supports six v six to. Uh, to a state to where you know it gets enough attention to where it keeps people engaged that prefer 6v6 over battle royale and maybe even a half breed of what modern warfare 2019 did right and what black ops cold war did right so and uh let me know down in the comment section what you guys think do you guys believe in sledgehammer games are you a supporter or are you not and that's all i got for this one guys hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one